weren't billed, especially maybe patients that um, were under a certain uh, poverty line or something. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So this was before, like, health care, when people could have actual health care and all of that, right? Well, black people, anyway. I'm asking you. Yes, I'm thinking. I mean, like, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I was on my way here, you know. Yeah, um, well, I don't, I don't know if maybe you found that out from her or what, but I'm just wondering. Uh, I'm just imagining that it could have. I guess that I'm just trying to rationalize why the hospital would not allow you, other than you being black. But like rationalize this, so the hospitals probably at that time were. Oh, okay. Now you know that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know that that that. um, Many blacks were turned away from from uh, from the hospitals uh, yes. because they refused to serve them. Period. Whether they had insurance or not, they refused. Mm. To serve or the them money period. or not. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cash, money, in hand. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. That was a story right. once like that with uh, I think it's Bessie. Was it Bessie Smith? Was it uh, a mom, mom? Yes. Uh, yes. I was trying to think of the yes. Okay. But some people say that's not exactly true, so I'm I'm not sure of that. But people if it wasn't uh, her, it was somebody else. Oh, of course, of course, there were many people, many people. But she was said to have died on the road, or died in front of the hospital, or on, outside of the hospital because the hospital would not treat her because she was a colored woman. So of course, right. yes. The only reason many. they stopped uh, doing this, practicing this, was. Um, Right after my my brother was born, who was three years uh, younger than me, something tragic happened uh, mm-hmm. at home for a home birth, mm-hmm. not particularly in our home, but and they had to stop that. They had to to allow the uh, black mothers to come into the hospital and and and, and receive proper treatment for all births. Receive proper treatment. Mm-hmm. All births. Oh my goodness! A little bit of history. There. Thank you for sharing that. Mm-hmm. that like, look, I, I'm getting this news alert, alert. There was a plane crash into Lake Travis somewhere around here in Houston, and emergency crew, crews are responding. So uh, that's near like uh, Austin and Travis County. So um, I hope that people are safe and they didn't lose their lives. Uh, for the light, for the light, for the light, for the light. Tonight we are going to discuss a topic, a couple of, well, quite a few topics tonight. We, we'll have, each night we'll have a myriad of topics that we'll delve into. Some we'll go deeper into and expound more on a certain topic. But tonight we have uh, some topics we really want to elaborate on. Respect yourself and forgive yourself. Respect yourself, forgive yourself. So tonight let's talk about magnifying our sense of self-respect. And we'll get to some best practices on forgiving yourself and letting go. I believe it's very, very important, learning to, learning to let go. Um, how are we raising our children? Uh, again, mm-hmm. this is one of these topics we will just we will not just touch and go. This will be an ongoing topic as well. How are, are we how are we raising our children? Like what are you teaching your children? What are you instilling in your children? What's important for you to teach to them? What do you want them to take away from your teachings? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything you want to share on that part, that specific piece? What, what, what do you? What, what is it that you would like for your child to say when they become adults? 
and they say, I will always remember when my dad or my mom told me this. I, I, I like to hear that. You know, mm-hmm. things that stick with your children. What, 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 what is going to stick with your children? And um, keep in mind, your children are watching you. They're oh, imitating yes. you. Mhm, mhm, mhm. Right. You. You can't use that old line. Don't do what I do. Do as I say. You can't use that with these mm-hmm. children. No. Mm-mm. You have no. to. No. You just shouldn't really do that anyway, because you have to lead by example. Because children, they are sponges and they absorb. They soak it all in their environment. Yeah. And yeah. like Tupac said, and like everybody else know. Well, not everybody, but people know. Some people have come to know that you are a product of your environment. And that's just natural. Right. That's organic. You become a product of your environment in many ways. So, <clears throat> because that's just your, um, so that's, that's your culture, that's your practice. That's what you see. That's your experience. Oh. Yes, that's mm-hmm. your experience. And tonight, tonight for our African spirit, one of my hometown people, Robert Church Sr., Robert Church Sr. from Mississippi, the first Southern black millionaire. Robert R. Church will uh, honor him tonight. Robert R. Church Sr. here at the Mind, Body, and Spirit for African Spirit here at the Mind, Body, and Spirit. And if you would like to send us a letter or uh, some type of communication, you can reach out to us at Mind Body Spirit Radio Show at Gmail. You can send us a fan mail. You can follow us on the Twitters and Instagram, the social media, Tumblr. Tumblr. You can follow us on Tumblr as well. But you can send us a letter about any anything on your mind. Questions on health, relationships, dating, career questions, love, sex. Hey, you know, we have to satellite have um another discussion on Sex. Let's talk about sex, sex. baby. People love Let's sex talk about sex, sex baby. Oh, Let's yes. talk about yes. you and me. Yes, healthy right. sex, healthy, healthy sex, sex with your your husband, or for people that are uh, into having sex um, prior to marriage, and healthy, safe, beautiful sex with someone, if you're into what is a fornication, then okay. But let's just make that sex great. Just make it great, yes. make it beautiful. And, yes. Yes. you know, so many Enjoy women, yourself. and not to, right, not to get off topic, but so many women do not experience orgasms. I was listening to this yeah. sister that said that she's like 40-something, and she's never had a, vag- a vaginal is it, is it vaginal, internal, like an internal mm-hmm. orgasm? Right. Vaginal orgasm. Um, She's had like a clitoral orgasm occasionally. I'm like, say what? You know, and so many women do experience that. And so the best thing is, again, be authentic. Like you say, fellow, like be authentic. Have that conversation with your mate. You have to sometimes show people what you like. And you go through that experience. And people can be offended when you show them what you like. You're only trying to enhance the sexual or intimate experience. Because that's what it's all about, right? It certainly is. Enjoyment it certainly and is. pleasure. Why go through all yourself. of that? Right. Why go through all of that and then you still are unsatisfied? That's just unnecessary and a waste of time. So you have to, like... Really, really talk to talk to your mate. Talk to your mate about what you like, uh, what turns you on, what you don't like. Like I tell people, don't stick your tongue in my ear. I don't like it, so don't do that. <laughs> but I don't like it. You know, not 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 like in my ear. You can nibble, but not in my ear. I just and I just don't like that. But that's just me. Some women may love it. Some men may love it. So, but anyway. <laughs> we'll have to uh, come back to uh, 
a sex topic. But listen, listen, Father Light, I have to I have to go back to this story that we spoke about last week with the football team here in Beaumont, Texas. Beaumont, Texas is like an hour or so outside of Houston going east, up I ten east. Um anyway. So um I did not connect the dots to the story and I apologize. So I said, let me just go back because this was a really, really great story. We were highlighting this football team and some of these NFL players that came together to support and help this team. So I did not connect the dots, so let me go back. It's a football team. A group of NFL players donated $20,000 to fund a youth football team in Beaumont, Texas, that is comprised of players who had their previous season interrupted after they took a knee during the national anthem last year when uh, Colin Kaepernick uh, was in protest and taking a knee. Well, these uh, Beaumont, Texas Bulls, a team of 11- and 12-year-olds, led the league to cancel their final three games last season and resulted in the suspension of, the suspension of the coach because they took the knee. After the fallout, some parents of the Bulls players created a new organization called South Texas Oilers in a different league. Okay, the Texas Youth Football uh, Football Association Association. So um, the switch came with a twenty thousand dollar price tag. So the New England Patriots defensive back Devin McCourty. Aquan Bolden and Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagles player Malcolm Jenkins and Torrey Smith were among the NFL players who donated the $20,000 to fund the first season of the Oilers. So the team has about 140 players, 4 to 13, with about a third of the players coming from the Bulls. So that is so great. The guys, yeah. The, the yeah. NFL players wanted to make sure that the uh, team was able to continue playing the sport, and they didn't want they didn't want mm-hmm. them to walk away from the season mm-hmm. feeling punished for trying to do the right thing. So they wanted to make sure that they were rewarded and acknowledged and encouraged. And they said that that was their main motivation for helping. Now that right there. That's how you do it. That is how you. That's do how you it. do it. You know what? I should write their names down and I should tweet them and I should say, "Hey, I really appreciate that." As a Texan, I mean, I, you know what? I need to make a note. Let me make a note. I'll make a note of that. Let me make that note. Okay. Tweet them. Okay. Tweet those football players. That's great. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Because you know we would talk about them like if they were doing something else, like maybe out at the strip club, or I don't know. I don't care about mm-hmm. guys in the mm-hmm. strip club. If that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. And, you know, you can find a woman that can dance for you at home. I mean, that's that's <laughs> nothing. But anyway, um, so this you spread one the is, world. You 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 spread you you spread the good intentions, and that's what we should do. We should. We should give back. Give back. Mm. Whatever you've been blessed with, give back to the community. And I think that's great. Absolutely. absolutely great. And they needed that. Yes, they stepped in just when they were needed. Mm. Well, definitely. I am just totally, totally, totally ecstatic about that. Totally ecstatic. So, um, let me see. You have a quote for the light? Yes. Um, my oh, this week, whatever you do, don't, don't stop playing. Don't stop playing. Some of us have actually forgotten how to play. I don't mean video games. I mean real play. The okay. quote is, this is one of my favorite quotes. You don't stop playing. Because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Oh, you don't stop playing because you grow old. 
you grow old because you stop saying it. Playful sex is the best sex. You're releasing those good endorphins, making you laugh, and then playfulness enhances your relationships. Playfulness actually is a part of it's a part of tantric sex. It's it's, it's one of those components of tantric, tantric sex because. It makes you feel less inhibited. You don't go jump in the bed and pull the cover up over your breast or snatch the light out or oh, you know, all that old stuff. You you're you're wide open, you you you're free. You're just laughing, it's like, Ah, I'm gonna get you. No, you're not, you gotta get me you know, and you're running around half naked with the shirt on and nothing else. Be playful. <laughs> Laughter is truly the best medicine. Mm. It up your muscles, brings down your blood pressure, snaps you out of that sad, depressed, or angry mood that you often find yourself in these days. And so, laughter, okay. laughter really eases, eases all kinds of things like pain. Like if you're in pain and you laugh, you forget mm-hmm. about it at least temporarily. And then if mm-hmm. there's a conflict, it's a way to get around that conflict by adding a little laughter. Mm. And then and then laughter laughter gets you through through difficult times too. Difficult times yeah. that you know, you otherwise would not have made it through. Hmm. No. Laughter and playing. Laughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Laughter and playing. There, there was a time. Um. Time. My 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 twelve year old daughter, my fifteen year fifteen year old sister, and I were in the back seat of a limousine, mm-hmm. and. My mother was in the front, my grandmother was in the front. And we were on the way to my brother's funeral. And amidst the somber mood, one of us in the back seat said something funny. And we all mm-hmm. giggled. Mm-hmm. My mom turned around and snapped back and looked at us with that look that only mothers can give you. And be quiet. Yeah. But we needed that. Yeah. We needed that. That the loosen us up because we were about to say something that was going to be pretty hard, and that laughter, mm-hmm. and we connected. All three of us connected. Yeah. You know, death in so, the family. Laughter. Hmm. Yeah, death in the family is, is very difficult, and and people mourn and grieve in different ways, and. Um, so certainly facing some uh, an, a, diff, a difficult experience, facing death, burying a family member. So proceed. Oh, Go yeah. ahead. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. Just commenting. Um, it it keeps you youthful. You know, when you when you play, you you you're laughing. We need laughing. to play with our children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just play with children, play with your grandchildren. Um, loose them up. We forget how to have fun. Relax. And, um, relax. 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 Put your favorite song on your music app and the one that makes mm-hmm. you feel good and the one that makes you, you, you move and, and dance and, and turn it up or either put your headpiece on and, and just dance as if nobody's watching. Put a red light on, like you're on stage. Everybody needs a red light. You remember the song, um, Summertime red light. by Will Smith before he became mm-hmm. Will Smith? Music. Summertime, break, break. summertime. Mm-hmm. That's summer, a great summer, song to mm-hmm. sing. Mm-hmm. And just dance. Yeah. That's oh. a very happy song. Yeah, it's very, it makes you it makes you smile. It makes you groove and smile. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Laugh and play. Laugh and play. 
You have to laugh and play and live your life. Um, thank you for sharing that also. Listen, today is also the anniversary of uh, the 1967 Newark riots that took place, um, let's see, started July, tw- July 12th, lasted until July 17th in 1967, uh, four days, uh, let's see, of course, there were several people, uh, several fatalities and people injured. Listen, I cannot, I can't believe this. There were 727 injuries, 26 deaths, 1,500 people um, arrested. Of course, of course, this uh, race riot and attack, basically, on the community uh, began with the beating of a black man by police in 1967. And here we are still experiencing the same type of treatment. My goodness. But the shift is here. The shift is here. The shift is here. But today is the uh, anniversary of 1967 New York riots. You can Google more of that and find out about the social unrest surrounding that and the events impact. And I think there is a documentary. I think it's only like a 20-minute documentary on on. In New York riots, but I shouldn't say only because sometimes some people just want a short documentary. I, I love a good documentary. I don't care if it's 30 minutes or an hour or two hours. Anyway, so New York, New York, New York riots, 1967. From 1919, really, on up until now, there have been so many race riots. It's just unbelievable. I have a small book. <laughs> On the um, wow. 1919 up until I think 1960, 1967 race riots. You see, it doesn't include, say, like uh, the St. Louis race riot from 1917. So, I mean, for, God, I mean, get me started on that, but just constantly. But the shift is here, and people are going to learn to love each other and work together. And we will see peace and happiness and enjoy living. I am confident of that. I am so confident of that. Um, any any news you'd like to do? Uh, share? Oh, Kevin, right, wait, I have to share this. I have to share this quickly about this young man in Louisiana. Um, let me get his name. I think his name is Daquan. Let's see. Let me see. Yeah, okay. I came across this story like over the weekend. There's always something happening. Let's see. And, okay, here we are. What is this young man's name? Um, Dejuan De- Guillory, a Louisiana father who was shot by a sheriff, sheriff's deputy, sheriff deputy. Okay, and let me see, what does that look? Evangeline, yes, Evangeline Parish. They might as well they may as well call these little parishes Evangeline Plantation. Um, it's always yeah. something happening in those areas. Uh, remember when all the racism still con- uh, continuing ask in Louisiana? Uh, um, not ask but uh, continuing in Louisiana was, uh, let's see, what was that that exposed? Gina Six. Gina Six. And people were right, like, oh, right. I think still treat black people like that in Louisiana. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The, con- the continuation of enslavement and discrimination and everything else. Um, Jim Crow laws. This whatever you, you you name it. I'm like, <laughs> 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 and I'm giving you credit, Shirley Season, because I don't want you to sue me because I heard she was suing those people about that. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just giving you credit, uh, Shirley Sees. I think you can. You name it! So, but, um, <laughs> oh my God. Yes, yes. Um, Gina Six. And so many other cases. There was a young man, Victor White. But anyway, back to this young boy. Keep a little young father, Dijuan, Dijuan Guillory. He was with his girlfriend, and they were out frogging, whatever that is. Um, when I tried to Google frog and all I could come up with is I guess you catch frogs and you make belts out of them but I just don't think that that's what they were doing I don't know but if anybody knows what frogging is you can you know, send us a message about that I don't know what frogging is 
but they were out frogging, and they passed by the sheriff, and the sheriff turned around, the sheriff deputy turned around, and he began to ask them for their ID, but they didn't have ID because they were out frogging. So um, I, I guess you're like out in the woods or something, maybe by water. I don't know. I really want to find out what it is. I'll try to ask around some of these Louisiana people. So the couple end up on the ground, okay, because I guess now he needs to arrest them or whatever. And so he shoots the Juan, and the young girl is said to have jumped on the sheriff's back, right, so that she wouldn't continue shooting and, and, and killing them. I believe the young lady said she heard, like, three more shots. So the young man, of course, died. She said he didn't move after she heard those shots. Not only is this young girl being charged for attempted murder on the sheriff, although he's the only one to kill somebody. Uh, Okay, not only that, but um, there are reports that this young man was also, like, dating that sheriff's, sheriff's ex-wife. I hope that that's true. Um, I really do. I hope that that's not true because people, we really, really, really have to be careful. There was another young man, same situation, here in, in Beaumont, Texas, up the street from Houston, Dating some uh, married, married, good-looking young man, married with with children, all that. Dating the sheriff's wife, and he ended up skinned in the woods. They basically lynched him and like chopped him up, chopped pieces off of his body, and blamed oh. it on the wild animals. Yes, blamed it on the wild oh. animals. So, um, people, you have to really be careful. Uh, my condolences go out to this young man's family and the young young lady. I certainly hope she has a good lawyer because how is she being sure. charged? This little bitty girl, this is a little this girl looks like she weighed maybe a buck oh five wet, and she's been charged with attempted murder. No weapon, no, no weapon. weapon. I, I, yeah, I hope that I hope that the charges have been dropped as of the time that we're sharing this story because I can't even imagine her going into court this Monday morning because I think this happened like last weekend. I can't imagine her going to court Monday morning and being charged with murder, attempted murder. Please. Come on, come on. But speaking of which, in New Jersey, I think that there's been a new ordinance passed whereas there's certain specifics to it, though, in loopholes. Um, victims can now defend themselves if they feel that the police is using excessive force. But, of course, you have to read through the loopholes because still the cops can actually, they can beat you if they're, like, saying um, don't resist like they do. Don't resist and I'll stop, I'll stop beating you. I'll stop beating you if you stop resisting. <laughs> so, but if they tell you that, you can't use uh, self defense. You, you can't defend yourself. I'm like, uh, really? I mean, so what is this really all about? But a person, there was a victim that was able to, I think, like counter sue. And oh, I should have pulled that story up. I'm going to cross this one. Okay, cool. That's, that's, that's good. Maybe, maybe you can get somewhere with that. Some people. You know, if, if Johnny Cochran was still around, mm -mm -mm. my goodness. Johnny Cochran, he would handle a lot of this. Um. Anyway, let's see here. You know what I did come across feather like, and then we'll move on into our our topic. I came across, I came across this story in Ohio. Eighteen school districts are going to allow naloxone, Narcan, the Narcan spray that they spray up people's nose when they OD. 18 school districts will allow Narcan in the school. In the school. Oh, what? <laughs> and it's because it's such a bad epi epidemic in Ohio that Governor John Kasich, he's okay with letting the schools buy and use a heroin 
reversal drug, which is known as Narcan. Just imagine how much the pharmaceutical companies have made over the years. I would sure oh, like to see their profit wow. sheets. I would like to see their profit sheets like oh, over the, uh, the uh, what is it? I, I want to see those cues over the past 20 years because I know they've really made, oh, my goodness, wow. billions of dollars, billions. Not only were people on the prescription drugs, okay, that they became addicted to and then started using heroin because you can buy a bag of heroin for five dollars, okay? And so for them buying the heroin is cheaper than buying a pack of cigarettes or or some alcohol. That's just how cheap heroin wow. is on the streets for these people. So many of them that are already out of work. So um they can find five dollars and people are prostituting themselves and oh my god it's just hard this is horrible if you know some people on drugs please help them because delta shared with me that she went to two funerals uh, recently with two young boys that overdosed i said this is horrible we have really we we, got, we have to help our speaking of delta here she is here let me see delta Let's see here. I'm so sorry. There you are. Delta, what's going on, Delta? How are you? Did I unmute you, Delta? Okay. And Feather. Feather. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yes. Okay. So anyway, um, I, I tell you, I, I really, really, really hope that and we'll talk more about this when we get into our uh, topic of what are you teaching your children. I really do hope that people are uh, inspecting their children's rooms and their pockets, your spoons. Those are some of the signs that some parents say, check the spoons. If your spoons are coming up missing, maybe they are using your spoons to smoke that heroin. But can you imagine they need the Narcan? They need the Narcan in the schools, Feather Light. And not only do they need the Narcan in the schools, do you know they even have a mobile, what they call morgue, a mobile morgue, because they have so many young children ODing and dying at school that they just have the morgue set up on the parking lot at some of these schools. No, no, no. Yes. Yes. It's real. It's it is real. Oh, this how distressing! Some of those to me. Oh my God, yes. Mm, 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 oh mm, my mm. goodness! They said some of these children are as early as uh, reports are that some of these children are in middle school, fourteen years of age, and overdosing. Oh. I was watching this one documentary, and then we'll go ahead on and go into our uh, topics. Here, topics here, some other topics. I was watching this one documentary, uh, several like these these young boys were were living in the woods, okay? Like living in straight up like the woods and stealing electricity and water from their neighbors, running a cord. Oh my goodness. You know how people used to run a cord. <laughs> <laughs> so on the documentary, uh, on the doc- and they were not black. Okay, they were not black. <laughs> and the reason why I'm saying that is because one lady. First, let me finish talking about these boys stealing this electricity and this water. I mean, the poor little lady. I felt so sorry for the lady, uh, Featherlight. The lady, the cameraman was the interviewer was interviewing the lady. And uh, she said, I'm just sick of it. I'm just sick of it. I came outside. And <laughs> <laughs> they have a cord connected to my, <laughs> to my body. What? They have a cord connected to my body. <laughs> to her, oh, her meter box. So however they steal the darn electricity. <laughs> and <laughs> she said they had some kind of cord and stuff type of contraption or something they were stealing her water I said oh my oh god my but you know what the environmentalists need to step in on that too because they said not only is that uh, that their addiction 
harming themselves, but it's harming other people like the lady and the environment because they burn up so much and they're living out they're living out in these woods, shooting up their hair on because they can't live anywhere else. I mean, it's just a mess. People, please, 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 if you see that your young people are depressed and upset, talk to them. Find out what's going on. Find out what is the deal with them because that is really, really sad. And what's also is sad is I don't know why, if all of these shootings are accurate, why were there more than 100 shootings over the 4th of July weekend? That's just sad. Also, now that's a health crisis, something is going on. If you really want to be concerned about a health oh crisis, God. what is going on? I mean, people don't just shoot people like that. So what is going on? Are people depressed? Are you spraying something? Oh. Is it something in the food? Is, is the water contaminated? What is it? People just don't go around shooting people like that uh, over oh, 100 no. people over the weekend. So, But you want us to you consider people de- uh, uh, deciding to shoot up. Deciding to shoot up, and then you justify saying justify it by saying, "Well, um, at first I did it to feel good, but now I do it so I can stay alive because I just can't stop." What? And then makes it okay. Go withdrawals and have some pain, so that's why you started taking the drugs, right? Because of pain. You got to go ahead on and deal right. with the pain and. You have to deal with the pain and forgive yourself, which is a great, great segue into our topics for tonight. You got to respect yourself and forgive yourself because if you respect yourself and then forgive and, and also forgive yourself, you wouldn't need those drugs like that. You wouldn't. Mm mm. Mm mm. You're missing something in your life, and tonight we want to help you with that. The boy. Yes. Yes. Yes, we want to help you with that. We want to help you fill that void. So let's let's get into our topic. Um, let me see. I want to share. I want to share this quote though before we go into our topic. No, no, I'll share that quote later. I thought maybe it'll fit in with our topic, but that's not the one that I have here. So no worries, no worries. Um, but respecting yourself, fellow life, respecting yourself. How to how to respect yourself? One hundred percent. So are we gonna do forgive yourself or respect yourself? Um. Let's see. Should we go with forgiving yourself first? Yeah. Okay. 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 Respect yourself. Forgive yourself. Forgive. Forgive. You must forgive. I have a forgive story. Can I share my forgive story? Please do. Okay. So. Sure, we'll help somebody. Okay. Okay. So I will share my forgive story. So, um, there were some things in my life, some experiences that I had not forgiven myself for. I didn't realize I had not forgiven myself, but I was still holding on to some decisions and actions in the past in my in, in my life. I have this best friend that shared shared with me that I have to forgive myself so that I can move on and grow into the life that is there for me, that I want to live. But first I have to forgive myself and not be upset with myself and not shame myself and not constantly kick myself for that, keep reliving those decisions or what happened. So once I realized that, I was able to evolve in a sense and, hey, it was beautiful and and it, it gets beautiful. My life is my life becomes more beautiful each and every day, and I just love it. And I appreciate it, and I am so, 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 so very grateful. So very grateful. So, yes, that's my situation. It really makes a difference. It really makes a difference. We, we find it easier to forgive others, um, but when it comes to forgiving ourselves, we have a, we have a hard time with it. Normally. We have a hard time with it. 
Okay, they did. The universe has um, always given us a second chance. Mm-hmm. We have to give ourselves a, a second chance, too. You have to give yourself a second chance. You have to give, give yourself maybe a third or fourth chance. Yeah, because you're right. going through life right. and you're living life, and it's okay to fall. It's okay to fall, but you have to rise again. You have to shake it off, shake, shake, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, and just rise again and continue on. And you may slip and fall again, but you have to keep moving forward. And, you know, Brother Light, um, uh, let's share with our audience that, uh, of course, people know how I love Ralph Smart with the uh, Infinite Waters channel. And so just hearing him share some points on forgiving yourself and respecting yourself, we said we should share this with the mind, body, and spirit listeners because we're all about raising your vibration lifting your frequency, raising your frequency, lifting your vibration. And so forgiving yourself is imperative. Forgive yourself. We always focus on forgiving other people. You know that feather light is always forgive and forget, forgive and forget. But do we right. focus on forgiving yeah. ourselves right. by going inside right. and just say, hey, I forgive you. I forgive right. you. Mm-hmm. And so it's and like sometimes over and over. over and over and over Over and over and over It's like if we scratch This is something that Ralph shares Like if we scratch a new car Then we define ourselves By that scratch The car is still a nice mm-hmm. car It just has a scratch So it's like mm-hmm. If you mm, Make a bad decision Say Um in a relationship or, or, or purchasing a home. Mm-hmm. It's not the end of the world. It's not mm-hmm. the end of the world. You can change right. that. You have the power. Just like you made the decision to go into that relationship or purchase that house, um, move out of the country, take that trip, and maybe you should have. You feel like you should have stayed at home with whoever but you decided to leave and do something for yourself, whatever the case is, it's still you. It's you, and it's okay. Don't feel, don't don't keep, uh, don't continue to kick yourself about it. It's the decision that you made, live with it, and move on. It's okay. Wow. It's really okay. Yeah. So don't keep, like, we live in, we live in that scratch or that mistake over and over again. Right. Yeah. And mistakes were meant to be lessons, not death sentences. Lessons. Lessons and not death mm-hmm. sentences. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Learn from your your mistakes or your experiences because didn't we say that like there really like no mistakes mistakes? It's more like right. we well we consider them mistakes. We consider it a mistake, but it's it's a lesson. It's an experience right. that you learn a lesson from. It's not a death. And those sentence. actions that you took were the actions that you. Um, mm-hmm. Those were the best actions that you felt that you could take at that time. The time. Mm-hmm. Your intentions, your intentions were good. I mean. If it didn't turn out right, then learn from it from the next time. Or you share what you learned with someone else. You can help someone else uh, keep them from doing walking down that road. So it, it, is, it is for a reason that we experience what we do. And a lot of times when we are in that non-forgiving state, we tend to, to, to judge ourselves by that by our past, things that that happened in our past. And we have to to come to the knowing that we are not our past. We are not oh, our past. We are not our past. More, it's more that's how you respond and how you act right now that's important. Not not your past. And and if you could ask yourself, I mean if you could change your past, if I said 
if I could change your path, Black Rose, would you mm-hmm. would you change your path? You might, but then would you take away all the lessons that you learned from your past? I, I often think, think, think about that. Together. Right. I yeah. often think about it like that. Like, what if I had had of? What if I? But then I would not have. Right. My experience. So mm-hmm. it, it it all mm-hmm. lines up. It's uh, it's all in sync. Mm-hmm. It's all divine. That's how I view it. Sure, there's some things or some actions, decisions that may be, of course, oh gosh, things would be quite different for me. But would I like that life as much as I love this life? And would I be on this path that I'm on now? Right. But I think it's so great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and, and people have to stop viewing themselves as a victim. Like, it's all my fault, and I had done this or that, mm-hmm. like I just said. If I had done this or that, and and I know, like I said, I do that. I've lived, I've lived those thoughts of, mm, wow, what if, what if? So, mm-hmm. listen to this. That um, listen to this. Listen to this. Okay. So, a group of women who were victims of sexual abuse were asked, "What did you do? What did you do to make that happen to you?" They couldn't come up with an answer. So love right. yourself 100%. Self-forgiveness mm-hmm. is the road to becoming your most authentic self. Your most authentic self. So they couldn't come up with an answer to, to blame themselves. So it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You made the decision, and, and you mentioned that, Feather like You right. made the decision, right. and... Yes, it's it's life, and let it let it go. 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 Yeah. And then sometimes um, we're in that mode of, I can't believe I did that. Oh, that was just. I, why did I do that? And we just keep re- um, rehearsing the same questions over, 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 and over in our minds. We're, because we're in the disbelief mode. Like, mm-hmm. I like, like, once I left my, my, um, I was out of town. I was in Philadelphia. I was on the train. I was on the car mm-hmm. riding that train. I was alone. And I had mm-hmm. been shocked. I had a lot of bags. A lot of bags. Of four. Mm-hmm. And I had a big bag, my purse that I don't normally carry, but I had it because I was out of town and shopping. And I wasn't sure of my stop. And um, and it was nighttime. I, I let the, the nightfall sneak up on me. I really wasn't supposed to be out alone oh. in a strange city at night riding right the train, but there I was. So I jumped up and I and I ran for the, you know, the opening and I left my bag that had my phone and and my wallet and and the addresses to where I was going because I was visiting oh. and oh my goodness what a night what a night what a night so mm-hmm. I could re- replay that over and over like oh that was such a terrible thing I was so embarrassed please tell me if ever that I was crying da, da, da. but it happened we have to mm-hmm. just say to ourselves okay. It happened. Mm-hmm. It really did. Mm-hmm. Now, what did I learn from that? Well, I learned a lot. <laughs> a lot. Keep my, my phone on me, not in my purse. You know, just a lot of little things that I learned. Don't have a whole bunch of bags, you know. So um, instead of beating ourselves up over something that happened in the past, let it go, realize that it happened, and realize, too, the number one universal law, there are consequences for our actions. On up to it, I left it on the seat. I was in a hurry. It happened. 
own up to it and move on instead of replaying it over because we can't undo it. It's done. Mm. That's another another point in um, in releasing and forgiving forgiving yourself because you can't go back and undo it. So if it were perfect, would you feel better? <laughs> you know? Would you feel better? Mm-mm-mm. Well, let's take a break, Silver Light, and we will come back and we'll conclude with our topic and pick up on some more of our topics and hot topics for the night. So you are tuned in to the Mind, Body, and Spirit radio show. Be sure to log on to Black Talk Radio Network page and donate, donate, donate. Purchase your T-shirt and you can sign up for BTRD social experience with Black Talk Radio Network. We will be right back. And we are back. I think we have a caller, Featherlight. Uh, let me oh, see. Caller. Caller, caller from 281. Yeah, what's going on? Can you How hear are me? You? Mm-hmm. Yes, Delta. How are you, Delta? Oh, I'm fine. How everybody's doing? Oh, Hello, to the Mama Day. Long it time to see your voice. It is good to be back on the line. It is so good to hear y'all's voice. It's so but good to I hear you listening. too, Delta. And, and also, Aisha Hot is on the line. Hey, Aisha Hot, welcome in, Aisha Hot. Hello. Hi, Hi. 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 Ladies, but, uh, so Delta, you you heard us talking about forgiveness, and we were talking about some of the other hot topics. Just to catch everybody up, if you're just joining us, we're talking about respect your, respecting yourself, forgiveness. I think Feather Light and Delta want to share something on interracial dating. So, um, yeah, what's going on? What's going on, Delta? Share with us. And um, two things I, I wanted to come. One thing mm-hmm. I wanted to come in on uh, that frog, and I heard this mm-hmm. morning, and just just so I can tell you exactly what it is, in mm-hmm. that town where that young man lived, the frog, and they go out and they catch these large, large bull frogs, and they take them and they sell them, and the people down south finds a lot of bull frogs and eat them, but those are those great great big bullfrog. Oh, uh, right. Like when they make the so frog all, legs and they're long like a that, that, that is correct. They, that is correct. They fry this right. frog legs. But this morning on the Reverend Al Shelton show, someone called in about that same case this morning. And he was referenced that he had got a call from the young man's mother. And he said that they was looking into it He said he think they're going to move forward. He said, but they don't put a law on the books now. He said they have to be real careful. He said now when they go and take on cases, they don't pass the law. And if you say one thing that's not correct, when you start fighting that case, they'll come back and sue the the organization, and they are deliberately trying to bankrupt the organization's. So he said now they just can't jump up and move anymore. This one he was telling someone had called in, was asking him to take on his case. That's when he referred that the boy's mother had called. And he said now they got to, before they make any move now, they have to really check it out and cross every I and dot every T now. He said because they are coming back and bankrupting the organization. But that's what I wanted you to know. Mm-hmm. It is catching Thanks. large bull frogs. They are catching large uh, bull frogs. Catching the, large, the large bull frogs. So that's what frogging is. 
problem. Yeah, and it's common. common. It's, it's common. very, very common. I assumed it was pretty common when I heard the report about it because no one went into, like, real detail because it was supposed to be something like everybody knew about was frogging. But I kind of imagine it was something about catching frogs. But I thought maybe it was some type of just like a name for something else also for a minute, some other type of activity. But, um, okay, frogging, that is really well, something. Okay. And then the new law is... Uh, yeah, that that's very harmful and detrimental to organizations. So you really have to work, uh, be careful about your uh, language and the legalities in your accusation. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, let's go ahead on and finish up a little bit on this uh, forgiving. Feather Light, you want to share some of uh, some other points on forgiving? We're talking about how to forgive yourself so that you can move on. If you ladies would like to share something on forgiving. As we close out this, and I think well, um, I'm going to talk about something else on. Mm-hmm. You are your greatest judge, and it's it's not good to be so hard on yourself and to judge yourself for your actions. We have all done things that we um, we feel are mistakes, and so it's not just you. All of us have done things that we feel that we should have done a different way. And realize that sometimes the universe will give us events and throw us experiences that will help us in our level of consciousness the most at that particular time. So sometimes these things are are needed to to, to build us, to strengthen us, and uh, to help us to focus. Um, hmm. Is there something that you can remember where you you can kind of relate to this? You mean me? I've got so many. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll share one. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Like not really being on time for, say for instance, when you when you're catching planes, okay, mm-hmm. and you've got this long layover, I can just find a million things to do and and walk all over the airport, but and then misjudge that time and getting back and then miss the plane and then it throws off my whole evening. So after missing the plane a couple of times. Now I just stay right in the area. Instead of beating myself up and saying, you know, oh, that was stupid, I should have stayed here, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have, you know, gone over there because it messed, it messed up my, my whole trip. Um, dating somebody that was an alcoholic, and I couldn't tell that he was an alcoholic because I never saw him drink liquor. Um, I I I beat myself up over that for a long time because I didn't I didn't see the telltale signs until months later. But now I know what to look for. Mm-hmm. I learned from that. Learned that was that. A, a learning experience for me. I learned a lot when you sit back. And and then I make the habit. I, I started uh, not really, um, not only not not taking it out on myself anymore. Certainly not the person either, because I, I still believe that these people are sent into our lives to teach us something, and it is mm-hmm. up to us to to sit back after it's over and figure out what it is that you were supposed to learn from that. So that you won't keep repeating that and you won't keep beating up on yourself because you keep doing the same thing. So um, forgiving yourself makes a world of difference in how you feel. Because if you don't forgive yourself, it's like a blockage that keeps you from moving forward. Mm-hmm. And when you don't have a sense of humor, 
it's difficult to forgive yourself because you take everything too seriously. You don't take the time mm. to just kind of loosen up, you know? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Enjoy life. Enjoy the day. and Enjoy the moment. Get in the nature. There's no judgment there. Mm-hmm. And and also, mm-hmm. if you're drowning in your own sorrow, pity me, mm-hmm. having your own pity party all the time, you can't see how far you have come. Because each time that you have made what, what we call a mistake, then you're still here. You're still getting mm-hmm. up in the morning. So we have to look at how far we have come, that you have survived. If you if you are drowning in your own sorrow, then you can't see how far you have come. So look at how far you have come that you have survived that, and mm-hmm. keep going. And remember, and the life is, is life is ten percent, and then ninety percent is how you deal with it, your attitude about it. Yes, that happened. Okay, I'm on and up to it. Mm-hmm. What can I learn from that? What can I learn from it? What can I learn from it? Yeah, Delta, but, have you had uh, to forgive yourself on something? For something yeah, in your life? And I wore that. Yes. Um, now, I, my my uh, number one, if I could go back and, uh, and like, forgive myself, I would, I would say education. I hate that I didn't really pursue education like I really wanted to when I was young and mm-hmm. I, I have a hard time with like forgiving myself and that's why I wanted so much more from my grandbabies but um, mm-hmm. I mean God has blessed me don't get me wrong God has blessed me but yes there are times I get deal trips I want I wished I had a really went and really pursued my education the things that I I want to do now, the things that I have come into, I want to be able to really be able to properly uh, express myself, and I know that comes with uh, having a lot of education, and because education is knowledge, it teaches you how to carry yourself, teach you how to properly present your words and stuff. So yes. Uh, yeah, there are times I beat myself up about it, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I don't want to, I, I can't say I really want to, I wish I could, in my younger days, I wish I would have uh, did a lot more. So that that's probably my biggest, that's probably my biggest thing. But I also mm-hmm. wanted to say some, a comment on something uh, I, I just said, and she was talking about for, for forgiveness, forgive yourself. Now, I have a problem, and I don't think sound cool now. I have a problem with a lot of people sometimes is, okay, you don't forgave yourself, but don't keep a wallet in it. Like, I know a situation right now where a young lady has a problem, and and she has a real bad problem with uh, being in foster, she's been in foster care, being molested and different things, but to me, I don't know where it may be that she can't get over it, but you got to, there sometimes you got to turn loose and try to move on. And I can't say it in a way that, that I don't want to sound cruel, but what I'm saying is you can't keep a wallet in it. What can you say or do to that person when they won't go and seek help? They just want to continue to feel sorry for themselves. And then I have a hard time with that. I really do. So, I don't mean to sound cool. That may sound cool, yeah. No, no. So she wants she wants outside help. She wants to she wants um, to, to talk she about it with her the, um She turned to the bowel, like alcohol. To the what? And oh, and we try. And we have, it's, it's, it um got out of hand. Okay, and we have tried to talk to her. And she said she was going to get some help. Okay, but she won't go get the help. So 
I said, I told someone the other day, I don't have time for her anymore. I don't want to hear her sob stories anymore. And I know they probably thought I was cruel, but what I was saying in a sense is you got to fight your way out of it. You can't lay there. Okay, like me, for instance, I come from a home where my daddy was an alcoholic, and he was mentally abusive and physically abusive, but I hadn't let that help me down. Now, it bothers me. I ain't going to tell you no lie there. Sometimes it may come in my thought, but you can't keep a while in it and keep a feeling sorry for yourself. No, you have to move past you, you, that. You got, to, you got to move. That's what I'm saying. And so I have a problem with when you study, keep a, uh, you won't, you keep a going back in that same cycle. Fight your way out of it. You ain't, to me, you ain't trying to fight your way out of it. And when you ain't trying to fight your way out, I don't feel sorry for you. Get out of my face. Now, do that sound ugly? Well, it did sound ugly when you said it. But, <laughs> 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 but what I mean, but see, you listen at what I'm, but what I'm saying is, I try to help you, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I try to mm-hmm. help. I've done what I know mm-hmm. to do. But right. you're not taking my advice, yes. and you're not trying. Mm-hmm. You're not trying to pick yourself up and go on. Is what I'm trying to. Do. Right, and and that's why I like so what I'm saying is what, mm-hmm. get out of my face. Right. So next time, maybe you can tell them, like we said, go into nature where there is no judgment. Where people won't say, "Get out of my face," like what you said, Delta. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding, Delta. But but see, they have to know like other ways to like come out of that 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 funk and being away. Sometimes that's what we call it, being away. They're just away. Maybe maybe they were on the verge of having a breakdown. Who knows? But I understand what you what you're saying. You you don't want to keep hearing them um, just constantly being depressed and down about the same situation or whatever is going on. Take some, take some action towards coming out of that and and uh, finding your happiness again. So I get you on that. Any other thoughts on that, ladies? Well, I think what she's saying is she's not going to listen to any pity parties forever because people will pull you and pull you over and over again to their pity party, and who wants to hear it over and I- over? And uh, but one thing that came to my mind on forgiveness is that. There's this other saying is that makes it really difficult to um, carry unforgiveness because it's baggage. And people say, you think of it like baggage. And if you continue to build on and build on and every time for yourself or others, You don't forgive. You're just adding another bag, another bag. And you're weighing yourself down with unnecessary baggage. Mm, And we know what happens after a while. You can only carry so many bags. You just break your body down. Bag lady. Mm -hmm. Bag uh, lady, bag lady. Just carrying around those bags. You have to put those bags down. Put those bags down. Yes, you live your life. Yeah, but I get you, Delta. You don't want to hear that pity party, and people just uh, they want people to join that pity party, like people say, uh, "Misery loves company." Then they want to pull you, pull you, yeah, pull you right on down with them. Um, Before we go into our ten thirty break, and then we we'll share uh, African spirit. Let me give out the phone number also eight six six five one zero nine zero two five. You can also follow us on YouTube and log on to Black Talk Radio Network, remember, so you can donate and also sign up for BTR. Uh, Rose. And you can follow us on Instagram as well. And uh, let me see. So, hey, you know, we did have this piece about respect and, and raising children that we need to also touch on, Feather Light. I think we took a lot of time mm-hmm. on the forgiving yourself. So um, mm-hmm. let me see here. Just before we go into our break, you want to touch a little bit on respecting yourself? Yeah, we can talk a little bit about um, 
some things that you can do. Sometimes we really don't know that we're not respecting ourselves. If we treated ourselves more like we treat our bosses, that would be great. But we don't mm. neglect ourselves. We do. We really do. We we say we say yes to something when we really want to say no. And by saying yes, that's putting extra pressure on ourselves. We end up feeling resentful uh, towards a person that we're saying yes to, and we also end up being uh, upset with ourselves. That's another thing where forgiveness comes in. Uh, we're, we're, we're taking on more than we should, and that's, that's not respecting yourself. It really isn't. And when you can look in the mirror and don't like what you see, you lose respect for yourself. Mm. You have to, to have integrity. You have to trust in yourself. Trust, trust in yourself to make, to make the best decisions for you. Be, be confident in yourself and, and set, have something that you stand for. You know? Have something that you stand for and when it comes to you, don't, don't, don't back down. Just say, no, no, I don't, I don't do that. I don't do that. Your self-respect is very, very important. Very important. You have to have self-respect for yourself. And the piece that you mentioned about um, if we treated ourselves like, like we treat our bosses, if we mm-hmm. could put if we could put as much time into ourselves or our dreams as we put into somebody else's dream or, or uh, helping uh, moving some other somebody else's agenda that's not in line with yours or anything like that but basically if we could just commit some time to ourselves building your dream or just doing something for yourself or like um i don't know a pedicure for yourself, a trip for yourself, um, a, a moment sitting down, I guess, what, whatever, just reading a book, just taking some time for yourself, working on your business plan, anything for yourself. If we could put mm-hmm. some of that time into ourselves, my goodness, mm-hmm. we will certainly grow to a stronger version of ourselves. Right, right. Oh. And, and nurture our gifts. Some of, some of us are not aware of, of our passion, or we have forgotten our passion. So spend time nurturing your gifts, which is usually what your passion is, um, and, and, and say to yourself, I have something special that no one else has, because we all do. We all have something special that no one else has on this planet. And if we're jealous of someone else's success or, or being pretentious or, or trying to be someone someone that we're not, then we tend to lose respect for ourselves when this happens. Certainly do. Or, or, or being bit. around people. Yeah, being around people who don't love themselves. Those are people on a lower vibration. We start to take on that 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 energy. Mm. We have to mm-hmm. we have you to have put up energetic to, yeah. boundaries. Mm-hmm. And if you want to be successful, go ahead. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Deb. No, what I, yeah. what I was saying is, if you uh, if, um, I heard Donald Trump say something. But listen, now I'm, I got a point to this. I heard Donald Trump say something the other day. And everybody was mm-hmm. offended by it. But then mm-hmm. I, I, even I was offended by it. But then I sat around and I thought about what he was saying. Donald Trump said he surround himself with people who just like him, people who are successful. So what I'm saying is say this. In order for young girls who want to go somewhere and who want to do something in life, you have to surround yourself with successful people. You cannot surround yourself with people who are not 
going anywhere. And I was very uh, sensitive when Donald Trump said, I want to be around people like me. And then it offended me, but then I sat down and I began to think about that thing. Then I began to hear other people say that if you want to be successful, Steve Harvey said he had to cut all his friends loose that had the mentality they was fine where they was. He said because if mm-hmm. he had stayed around those friends, he was going to follow that path. So we, right. as women, we got to change our mindset. We got to change our mindset. We got to hang around people who want to go somewhere. And not only not not only people who have a lot, but people who have wisdom, young ladies, young men, mm-hmm. who would tell you, okay, you can go somewhere. You can be successful. You can get up out of here. You don't have to stay here. You can be this. You can be that. But you got to surround yourself. If you surround yourself with someone who wearing baggy, I'm using an example, baggy pants, uh, ain't trying to go nowhere, ain't trying to do nothing, you going to take on that spirit. If you surround yourself with successful people, people who telling you that you can get out, and Miss Hattie may not believe this. Isa Hot may not believe this. When I met Isa Hot, Isa Hot, has a mentality for young women. If you ever wanted to go somewhere in life, surround yourself around Icy Hot. Icy Hot will tell you, I will show you how to come out of this path. I can show you how to be a lawyer. I can show you how to be successful. And you know why? I seen her do it. And that's something, Miss Hattie, I'll never forget. I saw you with my own eyes. I didn't even know you, and I saw you. I saw how you would take them young girls and try to put a drive in them. Some of them took your advice, and some of them didn't. That's okay. But you've got to surround yourself. You've got to surround yourself with uh, people who think. Later, a young man, I I can go somewhere. But I can do this. Cut yourself away from somebody that that uh, their mindset is in one place. I'm good sitting right here in this house. I'm good sitting right here in the project. I'm good sitting right here being this. Don't get me wrong. Now. It's okay to live in the project if that's all you got. But you don't have your mindset. Don't have to stay there. You can come up out. And that's all I'm saying. We got to surround ourselves, and we got to have women in the community to go out and tell these young folks, you can come out of it. But the key to this thing, the young folks got to want to come out, and the young folks got to want to listen. That's true. <clears throat> it's hard, but it's, it's say, hard, but it's true. You say quite a bit. Speaking of young people, Feather Light, you want to go with uh, the children, or you want to talk a little bit about interracial dating? Interracial um, dating. I, I'm I, ready. What? <laughs> <laughs> Delta love talking about interracial dating. Can't stomach it. <laughs> okay. Well, Wherever you ladies want to go. A, <laughs> well, I have a few statistics that I would like to share on okay. interracial dating. Um, okay. So June 2015th, March. Mark the 40th anniversary of the 1967 U.S. Supreme Court decision, Loving versus Virginia, which struck down all anti miscegenational laws, making it legal to marry outside of your race. So, there have been some statistics um, that have changed since this law was struck down. So, the Pew Research Center out of Washington, D.C., which provides research facts and figures on social issues and demographics and trends and public opinion and what have you. Um, they did a they did a very good study on interracial interracial marriage. Um, it is difficult to do interracial uh, dating and, and cohabitation because that's not on record. So that is usually those figures are usually higher. So in 1970, there were 65,000 marriages involving African Americans and whites. 
in 2005, that number had grown to 422,000. Um, instead of looking at raw data, we thought it would be more interesting to examine how often men and women of each race have interracial marriage. So this data is, represents marriages and not dating or cohabitating couples. That number is usually higher, okay? So these figures will give you something to go by. African American and white relationships. When African Americans and whites marry, there is a 2.65 times more likely to be an African American husband and a white wife. In fact, 73% of all African American and white marriages have this setup. Fully a quarter of black men who, get ma who got married in 2013 married someone who was not black. Only 12% of black women married outside of their race. Asian and white relationships. When Asians and whites marry, the situation is nearly reversed. In these marriages, it is 3.08 times more likely for the husband to be white and the wife to be Asian. African American and Asian relationships, really. Relationships. These marriages are still fairly rare. When these couples do marry an African American and an Asian, it is 6.15 times more likely that the husband will be African American and the wife Asian. Hispanic relationships. When Hispanic men and women decide to marry someone of a different ethnicity, the difference between men and women is nearly equal. 18% of Hispanic, Hispanic wives are married to a non-Hispanic man. On the flip side, 15% of Hispanic men have a non-Hispanic wife. In marriages involving Hispanics and whites, it is 1.17 times more likely that the wife is Hispanic and the husband is white. American Indians, this is really interesting, have the highest interracial rate among all single race groups. 61% females marry out versus 54% males marry out. So what these numbers reveal is number one, there's been an increase in social acceptance, which is obviously apparent. Among adults who are not black, there's a shrinking share of those who say they would be opposed to have a close relative marrying someone who is black. This number would, uh, went from 63% in 1990 to 14% in 2016. So there are less people who are against it now. Uh, among those who are not white, the share opposed to a relative marrying a white person has dropped from 7% to 4%. Blacks never really did have that much of a problem. Um, while the majority of all races still marry another person of the same race, it can sometimes feel like members of your own race are being chosen by another race. This can occasionally cause a problem if you only want to date or marry someone of your own race. For example, African-American women have to compete with white women for African-American men, as the numbers above reveal. Asian men actually are statistically worse off than African-American women. For every 1,000 married Asian women, only 860 Asian men are married. This data suggests that Asian men prefer to marry Asian women. But since Asian women are more likely to marry a man of another race, it leaves less Asian women to choose from. Maybe the African American women and the Asian men need to get together because they're being left out. So, um, when looking for love, look beyond race, and for that matter, beyond appearance, social status, and economic bracket. By doing so, you increase your opportunities to find a satisfied, loving relationship. Relationship. That you said a lot. Time. I mean, goodness gracious. <clears throat> um, 
goodness, we have to come back, come back and unpack that after the break. Let's take a quick break because um, those are a lot of statistics. There's nowhere in the world I could digest all that. And I know some people probably want to hear some pieces and talk about some of those stats. And I'm sure Delta has something to say, and maybe you have something to say. And you can call in and share your thoughts. After the break, we'll be right back with African Spirit, Robert Church Senior, and we'll pick back up on our topic and love the body. Radio since 2008, providing new black media for the masses. back here at the Mind, Body, and Spirit radio show, and tonight we are honoring Robert Church Sr. for our African Spirit segment. I hope you've been tuning in because we've been talking about forgiveness, a little bit about respect, and talking about interracial relationships, and we're going into a little love the body and also your commentary as well. But right now, let's honor Robert Church Sr. Robert Reed Church Sr. was a Millionaire business leader and philanthropist in Memphis, Tennessee, my hometown, born in Holly Springs, Mississippi, where uh, Ida B. Wells was born on June 18, 1839. Um, now, he is said to, <clears throat> excuse me, be the first black millionaire of the South, in fact. Um, let's see, he was the product of an interracial union. His father was a steamboat captain. Charles B. Church and his mother, in the line, um, who was an enslaved seamstress, died when Robert Church Sr. was 12 years of age. His father employed him as a cabin boy and a steward, and he survived a fatal steamboat, uh, surviving a near fatal steamboat sinking in 1855. Uh, Robert, in 1862, was forced to be a cabin steward. Um, during the Civil War. Now, he married uh, Louisa Ayers, who was also a former slave. They were married in 1862. And then they um, had one child together, Mary Eliza, who became Mary Church Terrell. And some people may remember Mary Church Terrell for being um, an outspoken uh, women's rights and, and, and uh, civil rights advocate, uh, just human rights philanthropist, um, great orator, writer. Anyway, so that's Mary Church to what Terrell. Love Mary Church to what Terrell is all uh, as well. And her brother, also Robert Church Jr. All of them have a story. But uh, Mary Eliza, she became a prominent civil rights, as I mentioned, and women's rights advocate. Now, after his marriage to Louisa ended in divorce, Church married Anna Wright in 1885, and they had Robert uh, Church, Jr., and he also followed his father into business and politics. Robert Church, Sr. was just this brilliant, brilliant businessman. Um, in 1865, Robert and Louisa Church settled in Memphis, where they both became entrepreneurs. Louisa opened a string of beauty parlors while Robert acquired a saloon and added, this, and added his holdings over the years, eventually owning a restaurant and a downtown hotel. We're talking like right after the Civil War. During the Memphis Race Riot of 1866, a white mob attacked church, Church's saloon, shot him, and left, left him for dead. He recovered and vowed to remain in Memphis despite 
the anti-black violence. He stayed during the yellow fever epidemic of 1878 and afterwards bought considerable real estate when property values were depressed. He saved Memphis from going under because he was the first one to purchase um, a municipal bond issued by the city of Memphis after its bankruptcy in 1879. And in, eight, and, in, and in 1908, he paid off creditors to prevent them from seizing Bill Street Baptist Church. Now, Bill Street Baptist Church, that was such a remarkable church back in the day. Those people used to come together, and when it was time to raise the money for an event, the, the community, or to help somebody out, or the church was in need of raising money for whatever, because at that time, churches were active. They were places of organizing and activism. Um I, I remember when we would give to, tours in Memphis, the history was that there were some Sundays when people would come together, and I think it was one particular occasion when they were trying to save, it was a building or the bank, or the Black Bank, uh, Robert Church's Bank, I can't quite remember, but people donated so much money in the form of coins. They had mm-hmm. to bring wheelbarrows to take the coins out. That's just how... People had coins, you know, because they, you know, because wow. in 1865, you just come out of slavery. But these people had wheelbarrows. But this was in, um, mm. I can't remember exactly what year that happened. But anyway, um, in 1882, Robert Church entered politics. He ran for office. And um, let's see, he was unyielding in his desire for black people to have freedom of movement and the organic pursuit for happiness. In 1899, he used his own money to purchase a tract of land on Bill Street where he built an auditorium, landscaped the surrounding grounds, and called the venture Church's Park an auditorium. The first major urban recreational center in the nation owned by an African American and the largest in the country at that time. In 1902, President Theodore Roosevelt spoke to 10,000 people gathered at the auditorium and on the surrounding grounds. The president's presence and speech acknowledged church's political prominence in the Republican Party circles. Two years earlier, in 1900, church had um, been a Memphis delegate to the Republican National Convention. So he was a, he was a businessman and into politics. Um, he, let me see, this venture was he did $100,000 when he built the church auditorium, which seated more than 2,000 people and became renowned a renowned cultural, recreational, and civic center for black Memphians. Other famous Memphis citizens such as W.C. Handy uh, were employed uh, there. He was an orchestra leader at the park and auditorium. Speakers and performers at Church's Auditorium included Booker T. Washington, James Weldon Johnson, and the mighty Fisk Jubilee Singers. And at this particular auditorium, and then we'll wrap this up, um, this was the only place where there were intermingling of the races because um, when Robert Church opened this auditorium, there were some white people that did not want to interact with the black people. So Robert Church said, this is my auditorium, my park. I built this. Black folks will be here any day this park is open. And so it be. And that's what happened. Um, Let's see. Uh, Robert Church, he influenced Booker T. Washington's National Negro Business League. Uh, They came together and founded the Solvent Savings Bank and Trust Company, which was the first black bank in Memphis since the collapse of the Freedom Savings and Trust Company Bank, uh, Memphis branch, in 1874. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Throughout his years in Memphis, Church gave liberally to local schools, social and civic organizations, and charities, and he became the most prominent philanthropist in the city. He passed in 1912 at the age of 73. Robert Church, Robert R. Church, Sr. So he is our African spirit honoree. We honor Robert Excellent. Church. 
Excellent, 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 excellent. So any thoughts on uh, interracial relationships or Robert Church? Any any comments? I know Delta has something to say about interracial relationships. <laughs> yes, Delta, well, <laughs> well, first thing, I like all just for all the stats that she gave while we are but I'll Google it and look it up. I really would like to know the divorce rate among interracial marriages. But anyway, the reason I said I don't believe in it because it's just, to me, it, it, um, I think when, uh, as black people, when we, we young men go and they make money and they take it out of their community, they act like a black woman is not good enough for them. And I just can't stand it. I, just, I mean, and I probably need prayer. Lord, forgive me because I say I'm a Christian. Probably need prayer. I got, in, I got a lot of interracial marriages in my family. And my boy even married a Native American. But I just don't, I can stomach the Native American better I can black and white. I, I promise you. And I need prayer. I ain't even lying. I just don't agree with it. I just don't it. it makes when I mm. see it, it makes me want to vomit. Because what I say oh. is, oh my goodness, you think, oh, I'm mm-hmm. being honest. See, you got to speak <laughs> your truth. A lot of people feel this way, but they'll keep it inside. Come on now, let's be for mm-hmm. real. A lot of people mm-hmm. feel this way, but they'll keep it inside. They just won't speak it out. But Donald mm-hmm. Trump making them speak it out now. So, so I guess yes, you can speak your part out too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am. I am. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I guess I was a call the interracial hotter, but I'm not even more. <laughs> not. You've well, been liberated. I'm just, You're speaking I'm your truth. Her, her throat and chakra is open. <laughs> yeah. I just don't believe in it. They also need, need my theme song, I'm Coming Out. <laughs> I'm just being You're coming honest. out? I'm mm. coming out. I'm coming out, and I'm coming out with both sides. All right. But because it's just, right. they just act like we not good enough. So mm. private and my private is the same thing. So why my mm. private is so much? But a lot of our problem is, is the TV have taught the young folks that your skin is better than mine. They taught them, and it's been embedded in their brains. You go get you a white woman, you have a ride. Mm-hmm. That's the way a black man feels. Yeah. It's just also to, like, I guess for some people, I've heard some people say, um, because it's been something that's taboo, um, the forbidden fruit, rather. Mm-hmm. Something that you're not supposed to have access to. It's like a teenager or a baby when you tell them don't eat the cookies or you tell a teenager, don't no. stay out late. They want to stay out late. Well, I still say. About? I mean, like I said, I just need prayer. I just don't believe in it. And, and it just, they evil. I, I, my, mama was, my mama taught me they was evil. They was evil. And we're seeing it right now. There was a young black girl who went to a party. I mean, she was engaged to marry this white gentleman and it's making the news everybody's talking about it on Facebook you can put it up the young girl I can't remember what town but she engaged to get married young black girl pretty girl she goes to this she get her what y'all call that privilege card what you call that card uh, your white My privilege, privilege card. card I guess yeah I mm-hmm. guess she forgot she was nigger unprivileged but she goes to the white privilege party with her white boyfriend, this heifer winds up dead, and all the white folks walked away, and she the only one, an excellent swimmer, mm-hmm. she walks away, I mean, all of them walk away from the party, now she walks, she land at the end of the pool dead, Did you pray for- nobody knows. nobody knows how she's laying in the pool dead, her car is gone. All these white people uh, got up and left. Now they're trying to say it's an accident, and her car is stolen, her brand-new car. But she goes there with her white privileged boyfriend, and they want to show her, you still a nigger. 
and nigga, we gonna kick you. And they did it. I tell you, people really have to be careful and watch your surroundings and know who your friends are. Um, so the lights, you want to do your love the body or what you going into? We only have a yeah, few I'm more minutes. Do, um, I have, um, actually, I have a, a love the body recipe that I want to show. You can use this uh, for bedtime. It will help you sleep better. Sleeping Ooh. has a huge impo- impact on your overall health. And getting a good, decent night's sleep is, is very important because it, it boosts your mental and your physical health. So this is banana and cinnamon. So banana, of course, are packed with potassium and magnesium. And these um, these are minerals that help with your sleeping because they relax your muscles and your veins, and they wipe out the excess cortisol, which is really good. Cortisol helps you retain weight. Um, Tryptophan in bananas increases. What I uh, couldn't hear you. What cortisol? You what? Cortisol. Cortisol okay. is um, um, it's a, if you accumulate too much of it over some stress, then it accumulates in your stomach, and it's stored in fat, and it's extreme. It's extremely difficult to get rid of, no matter how much you diet and exercise. You have to actually get rid of the stress. Okay, so um, this, this is the ingredients. This is the recipe. One banana, one pinch of cinnamon, and one liter of purified water. So you boil the water, you cut off the ends of your banana, and you add it to the boiling water, the ends of the banana. You steep for 10 minutes, and you strain. Okay, you don't eat the banana. You add a dash of cinnamon. And you drink it. You drink this one hour, the elect- this elixir, one hour before going to bed. And it will really help you to relax. So that is a very, and it's very economical. We, I mean, who doesn't have cinnamon? You need to keep cinnamon. It's very good for you. Um, and, of course, if you're doing smoothies, I know you have a banana. All right, so that is my... Um, Love the body. Um, I have a watermelon kicker. Oh, it's for a large kicker. Watermelon kicker. This is a. It's like a. It's like a a smoothie, but it's not a smoothie. It doesn't have the banana. So two cups of watermelon. You know, watermelon is packed with minerals. Two cups of watermelon. One mango. Juice of one lime. Two kiwis peeled and sliced, or you can put the old kiwi in there, it's still good for you. One cup of ginger beer, which is optional, everybody doesn't have ginger beer. One cup of mango lemonade or any other kind of natural juice that you like. A cup of coconut water and a tiny, tiny piece of jalapeno pepper. And a couple of cubes of ice. And just blend like crazy. And if you want a spiked version, you can add two shots of coconut red rum. Red rum. All right, so let's get ready to do our breathing exercise. Did anyone else have any comments before we do our R and R? Relax and release. Relax and release. Relax and release. Um. I do want to try that watermelon kicker. That sounds yeah, that sounds really good. Yes, mm-hmm. it's, it's um, the watermelon is just great, great, great for you. It cleanses you out. It's got fiber, uh, all that extra water that just gets flushes out your system. The best thing is the best. now try to stay away from these seedless watermelon people. That means something is not quite right. No seeds. Try uh-huh. to find mm-hmm. you one on the street. Feed it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Relax. So we should pick them. back up. What we should we should pick back up though on um, next week the children because we didn't get to talking about our children. How how are we raising our children and respect and pick back up on the interracial dating. 
because we just kind of okay. walked around that a little bit. We didn't even delve into that. So I would love to come back to those topics and talk a little bit more. Definitely. Unpack them some more. There's, for sure. Yes, because I would like to ask you ladies a question about interracial dating. That's what I in, in fact if I could just put that out quickly. So Delta, just think about it. You guys don't have to answer it now. Next week let's talk about it. Um, would you oppose interracial dating, say for instance, an African American woman with say um an Indian man? So No I wouldn't. Oh, okay. So it's just white men? Just the white. Oh, it's just white. Yeah, black and okay. white. I just can't get past it. Uh, okay. 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 That's, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, there's there a lot of uh, choices of men of color yeah. out there. Like a Colombian man or a Cuban man. Ooh, a Cuban man. Mm-hmm. Ooh, an Afro Cuban. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. love an Afro Cuban man. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Let him play those Congos to me, baby. Ooh. All right. Okay. You're going to give us a little breathing. We have to pick back up on our All stage. right. Okay. Everybody just kind of relax. Breathe. Got a wave after thinking about Shake your shoulders. Okay. Take a deep breath in. Out. We're going to do a little resistance breathing to strengthen your lungs. Your lungs will respond to training. So... We're going to do some resistance breathing tonight to increase your lung capacity, increase the ability of your lungs to hold air. So breathe in normally through your nose this first time. Just breathe in. Breathe out through your nose. Breathe in again. Stomach should... Go out, balloon out as you breathe in, as you fill in your lungs, fill in your stomach. Exhale, your stomach goes in, goes flat, goes towards the back of your spine. Now this time I want you to breathe in through your nose and partially open your mouth just a little bit. If you're getting ready to whistle. Breathe in and breathe out through your partially pursed lips so that you let out just a little bit of air with resistance. Breathe in through your nose with a count of four. Two, three, four. And out slowly to the count of six. Again, breathe in four, one, two, three, four. Let out a slow stream of air through your lips. Three, four, five. One more time. Inhale four, three, four. Slow stream out. Two, three. Four, five, and work, work your way up to ten. This will strengthen your lungs. This will um, help stretch them out. The military teaches recruits how to increase their lung capacity, capacity for emergencies. So this is very good for improving your lung stress. Take one more deep breath in and out through your nose. Take your shoulders. And thank you for participating and joining me in my breathing session. Namaste. And thank you for joining us tonight. That was quite relaxing. It's so good. Wonderful. Oh, I enjoyed that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Satellite. 
Thank you, Delta. Thank you, Aisha. Hi. Thank you, Scotty. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And we will be back next week. We'll have to pick back up on those topics, too. Oh, my goodness. I'm looking forward to that. And we're looking forward so to you joining us. Thank you. Yes, so much to say. So little time, so much to say. We will be back to say it all again. Have a wonderful, beautiful, prosperous week. Namaste. Namaste.